prayer is not something we can quantify most of the time. So it's kind of hard to put it into scientific terms. But we scientists like Joe Dispenza have found that there's actual waves caused from our being. You know, there's actual um, waves that we're sending out when we have different emotions. You think your prayer life has developed over over the time or has there been something that you discovered that has amplified how you view prayer? Yeah, I think it has developed in terms of like changing. Yeah, I would say compared to like uh, middle school, high school, where it wasn't like a, it was more about just doing what, you know, authorities tell you in terms of what prayers to say or not say. But I don't think it really was until I got confirmed and they started talking more about how prayer is not about reciting things, reciting words. It's, it's more about talking, having conversation with this higher power that I realized that, you know, prayer isn't what I thought it was or what I was taught before, you know, like, because as a kid, you're like, oh, I need to just repeat this because this adult is telling me to do it. But then as, as you get older, you start realizing the maybe the more of the meaning behind it. And then as I got to St. Mary's University and started my research project on, on God and theology and all the stuff about his existence and trying to prove it, looking at both sides, I started, you know, learning, I guess, deeper insight into what prayer is and what it could be. And, and then I read stuff like Walter Russell different philosophers and it can be more complicated than it seems on the surface my life in itself was really paved by my parents right they told me to go to church i would go to church if they told me to pray the rosary i would pray the rosary but it came to uh college that i actually started asking myself like well why why pray the rosary why do this why do that right and i think similar to you what you were mentioning a little bit was you know trying to find answers to why we do things, not just to do them because it's the right thing to do, but why is it the right thing to do? There's actual waves that are going on, you know, that our brain is producing different alpha waves, beta waves. We kind of heard it a little bit more when we talk about sleep, and we're actually almost causing a ripple wave. Jesus back then could not describe prayer like, like maybe scientists can do now, but, you know, he was trying to explain it in the best way possible to what the people could understand at the time, you know, that he was there, right? He was not going to go into deep scientific, you know, research about why that form of prayer was the best. That, you know, you, you, any reasonable person should be skeptical of, but like for me, I just try not to shut anything out just because it sounds strange. I like to investigate. I'm an investigator. I'm not a Mm -hmm. shut this out kind of person so it makes me think of a lot of things that walter russell says that i've read from the cia being released documents um, like the gateway experiment i think it was called i think it was really interesting how the bible talks about and jesus talks about how the intention matters and you mentioned that Mm -hmm. before about it's not just the words said in prayer but the intention that follows Um, you also said jose that before this, uh, like uh, like in Genesis, in the word of God, God didn't just speak the words, but perhaps there was some intention behind it. Yeah. That makes it. It's al- yeah, it's almost, yeah. Intention plus plus words created creation, right? Using intention with prayer, as you say, with words spoken out loud, you know, is self-fulfilling prophecy. We've talked about that before. Believe something and then that belief in our mind is strong enough to make us act in certain ways. And the world responds back to us in those ways. And it's like a cycle of, and that ties with a lot of attraction. You know, you believe certain things, you might attract those things to you from the universe or the attitude you have, the beliefs you have, how strongly you believe in self-doubt, all of that. And then then these are some quotes here from uh, Walter Russell. One of them in particular, he said, all knowledge is possible for anyone in the cosmos, the universe gives it to him who asks. That sounds pretty similar to the Bible, does it not? I yeah. Mean, I yeah. I mean, God said, yeah. like, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Seek and you shall find. And he talks about the universal ego. You have to replace your ego with the universal ego. Because, like, what are the little things I've read and understood, minimally, because this stuff is complicated. Walter Russell, I still haven't fully understood all of it. And to the people who don't understand, who yeah. know who Walter Russell is, could just give him a brief summary. Yeah. So, Walter Russell is a, a polymath. He's a scientist, a philosopher, an artist who did sculptures and I think paintings as well. 
he was in the 1920s era close to Albert Einstein and and he basically embraced uh, science creating scientific theories with God you know and, and tying it directly with God as he refers to as the universal one he's published several books that are really kind of rare and hard to find and there's a quote by Nikola Tesla where Nick Tesla said Tesla was a very he's like a genius and he said Walter Russell should bury his works bury his writings for a thousand years because mankind will never understand them kind of thing because he says it's too complicated mankind's not ready prayers i think might be a way of create connecting our mind to the universe as you said Jose, mm-hmm. at the beginning yeah. about we project waves maybe those ripple out and chain reactions to the universe that's a yeah. real this is a cai document i found a few years ago that was released and, and it talks about the gateway some type of gateway thing where they're trying to understand whether intentions can um affect the universe i think it was something like that meditation and focusing your willpower and intentions to like affect the universe in some way and then mm-hmm. you might say this is strange right this is all bs right but there was actually a scientific experiment done people did meditation uh these scientists had a i think it was a control group and they had professional meditators who had done it for years and they had the meditators imagine the electron and some type of thing uh moving they imagine affecting it in some way and the experimental results showed a significant result that they were able to affect the electron with their mind they did a meta-analysis which is in research you do a statistical analysis on like dozens of research studies on the same thing to see if there's consistency Mm -hmm. and they did do that on different experiments showing psycho they call it psychophysical interactions so when the mind is interacting and affecting the physical world that meditation double slicks from our reference earlier. And they said that, you know, there were small uh, significance, but it was still statistically significant and repeatable outcomes, it says here. So that means it was consistently found, not just in one experiment, but several. Like-